Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for coming. Of course. For interview with us today. So this was um, at World Team Trophy was your last competition of the season. It's been a very exciting season for you with many new things happening. So can you talk us through your season? How it was for you? Yeah, I mean, it started off with a change, uh, moving for the first time in my life. I uh, went from Texas to Colorado Springs. Um, you know, and last year my season ended very early. It was first week of January. So having it be like mid, was it mid-April now? Um, very long, very exhausting, but couldn't be more rewarding. It's been great. I got my first Grand Prix medal. I medaled again at Nationals, first Worlds, first World Team Trophy. I couldn't be more grateful and happy that I made it all the way to this point. What was your highlight of this season? <sighs> ah, it's so hard, but I think either Skate America, because that was great. I mean, you know, first Grand Prix medal, amazing. Home. Yeah, at home, yeah, having a great audience. There was like this section of people who had pride flags that were yelling so loud, it was wonderful. Um, as well as nationals, I mean, seeing that score, working so hard and coming back to nationals after such a devastating um, previous championship, um, it's really meant a lot. And then qualifying, obviously, for Worlds and World Team Trophy, it, it's been amazing. And uh, unlike other skaters, um, you make your world debut at age 22. <laughs> yeah, 23 right. actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, your birthday was in October. Right? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. So, yeah, um, and at the right boat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, like others that are coming mm -hmm. to the world school, 15, 16 Exactly, years. yeah. So, how do you feel about, um, and what does it maybe tell about the sport of preservance and the sport of figure skating? Yeah, I mean, I was... It's not like I didn't have like success at a young age. I have 14, one junior at nationals and everyone was talking, oh, next year you're going to medal and then you're going to be the next Gracie Gold or Paulina Edmonds. And that's what was expected. And since that didn't happen right away, people kind of just brushed it off like, oh, she's done. You know, she's 18, 19. Ugh. So I wanted to kind of show I'm not finished. I have so much more to give and I still do. Uh, I'm passionate about this sport. I love it. I've taken care of my body. I've taken care of my mental health. And those have helped me preserve everything and get better and better and better. So it doesn't have to be immediate success. You don't have to be 15 and already on you know, the world stage. You can build and keep building and building and building and still hope to get there one day if you take the right steps. Yeah, well, that's great. Really. And, uh, what was the difficult moments this season that you had to overcome and how did you overcome them? This season or all seasons? Well, yeah, you can even, yeah. This Both? Season and, yeah. <laughs> um, of all seasons, I mean, after that, like in the 15, 16, 17 uh, kind of age, seeing people kind of have their success at that age being their peak and realizing, oh no, like I might have passed it already was really hard and I kind of had to carve out a new path for myself, um, which I'm still trying to do. That was really difficult, but I feel like I got through it really well. And then this season, just adjusting to being new, somewhere new, somewhere away from family. Um, but I've made a new family. There's been amazing people at the rank, my coaches, my sports psychologists, my trainers. Everyone has been very helpful, very accepting, and very supportive. And what prompted your coaching change? It was, I had never moved in my life. I had always been in the same place, and I knew if I don't try this, I'm going to regret not seeing what would happen. And back in Dallas, it's wonderful, but it, I didn't have the same access to the facilities of the Olympic Training Center, of physical therapy, anytime I need it, free healthcare, all that kind of stuff. 
Um, I'm able to take care of my body a lot more now. Uh, and so that was a big thing that prompted me. So um, from this season, as you said, there are many new things, new experiences mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. you. What do you take from this season? What is the most important experience for the future? I feel like this year I got a lot more international experience and not just you know, I've done Grand Prix before, I've done all these things, but I didn't have this long of a season, um, this competitive of a season before. And I feel like I stood my ground. It wasn't the most perfect performances. It's not like I, everything was my best, but I was steady. And that was my goal for the year is to just stay consistent. And next year, I feel like I can have that as a starter rather than being down here have that as a starter and go upwards and try and have those great moments rather than just trying to stay steady so that i feel like will help a lot for the next season what are your plans for the next season You're going to that program? i know it's <laughs> it's so i because coming into this i didn't even know how many more seasons i do i was like i'll take it one at a time but I'm obviously I'm not done. I can't be yet. Uh, I definitely plan to have two new programs. Um, I can get very creative with it. I plan to work with uh, my same uh, short program choreographer for my free skate actually, and then uh, Caitlin Weaver for my short program. So I'm very thrilled for that. Uh, I plan to try and up my technical content as much as I can, get things more consistent, the axle more consistent, um, maybe work on some quads if my body keeps healthy, uh, and just really, I want to see what I can do. I mean, you know, I want to see what I'm capable of. That doesn't mean I'm going to go and throw it out in competition, but I want to see what I can do while I'm still young-ish, <laughs> you know? You are young yeah. <laughs> Age is just a number. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I physically, I feel pretty good. Uh, I just got to stay injury free. Mm, yeah, that's mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Sure. And as you said, you're now in Colorado Springs. You have very good access yes. to all these uh, facilities yes. to keep you healthy. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and there's like, with, uh, you, so have you ever tried a quad already? Because oh, yeah. Like, I love it. Um, it's, and I'm not a big harness person I'll do it sometimes but I get the, I don't know I don't like having someone that close to me um, so it's something I have to like put on the butt pads I have to tape everything make sure I'm safe make sure I'm warm then I'll try it um, you know I've always loved toe and I've gotten pretty close on some toes but I haven't tried it since the season started so now that I know that I'm going to be competing uh, next year rather than last year to where everything was up in the air. I can take like a couple weeks to just mess around, do what I need to do for fun, and then get programs done, keep going with the year. Which of the skaters are maybe inspiring you especially? I mean, for the consistency and love of it, Isabeau has been a great person to see. Uh, seeing the new generation coming up, her, Hayen, really just enjoying it. Uh, and then seeing people like uh, Ilya pushing the boundaries of skating, doing impossible things is incredible. So seeing all these young skaters doing this, I wanna see, I'm like, I wanna see if I can try and keep up, see what I can do. So we'll see. Yeah. So Why not try? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Late in their career, yeah. having big success and yeah, exactly. also mm -hmm. learning new elements. Mm -hmm. Now, um, you are also a little bit different from other skaters, <laughs> and also your style is a bit different. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, how do you work on that? How do you develop your own style? Mm -hmm. Show your personality on the ice the way you do. Yeah, I mean, it's something that I used to try and hide. I used to try and do things to be more similar to other skaters. Uh, but I realized that in doing so, I wasn't enjoying myself as much. Um, so I kind of just will go on the ice, listen to some music, just do whatever and 
you know, interpret the music, do fun things, and choreographers would be like, oh, wait, what was that? Do that again. Sometimes half the time I won't know what I just did. Uh, but having that almost like seven-year-old, ten-year-old me, little kid, just kind of come out, uh, why I love skating, why I enjoy it, uh, and that creativity, it's something that I feel like people can see that I'm enjoying it and that I have a lot of passion, uh, as well as not being afraid to be powerful, be strong, be fast, because I'm not trying to be a pretty princess all the time. I'm trying to be an athlete and have that power and not being afraid to look too manly or anything. And it's something I've embraced rather than try to hide. Yeah, I think really yeah. this powerful message yeah. for you as that. So yeah, for sure. To, to show that off. Yeah. And, but I also like, really liked your programs this season. Mm -hmm. um, the music without you mm -hmm. and the, um, the road check. Yeah. Unusual version. Yeah. It's a very cool. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of music styles you would like to explore in the future? Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to do something that's similar to how dramatic Hit the Road Jack was. Maybe a little bit different because I feel like some of the times I did get a little, it was something fast so I'd get a little anxious. Um, but something just as part of my language but like badass and cool. Uh, I really want to have that again because it it's a great feeling. Uh, thank you. I, it's something I really have to get into the zone to do. Uh, sometimes have to fake it till you make it when you have those competition nerves. In practice, it's so different, so relaxed, and I'm just going for it. So I'm slowly learning to just calm down and then just be fierce. Uh, I definitely want to do something similar to that. And then for free skates, I'm really still exploring. I'm trying to find out. I like was in bed last night thinking about it, trying to sleep, but then kept on having pieces of music go through my mind. So I'm definitely still searching. So it's you yourself, you pick the music all the time? Usually, or like people bring stuff to me sometimes, but I'm usually the one that searches for it. And uh, off the eyes, you are known for your activities with mm -hmm. um, the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. So how have that developed and uh, what's your message? Yeah, I mean, it's something that just, it, I feel it in my chest. It makes me so happy to see those pride flags, to see people come up to me and tell me their stories and how they relate, how they, found inspiration to be themselves because they saw that an elite athlete was being themselves publicly and nothing bad happened, you know? Of course, people are gonna have hate no matter what, but it's something that I feel like I finally was showing 100% of myself. I wasn't hiding behind anything. I wasn't trying to be smaller. I finally was like, this is me. If you don't like it, don't be around me. I don't care. And so I got to see who truly accepts me for who I am. And anytime I see someone else that I know is part of the community, there's almost this sense of family and uh, connection and it's wonderful. It, as well as supporters, people who are um, allies and very inclusive and helpful. It's been really nice. <laughs> but what were maybe the difficulties getting to this point? And yeah. uh, you said, yeah, because there is, unfortunately, there is mm -hmm. hate out there. Uh, yeah. And that's the reason why some people are afraid right. to, to show themselves. Yeah, and I mean, there's, in the world, of course, there's crazy things that, uh, prevent people from being able to just be themselves, which is really unfortunate. But for me, it was something as silly as I was worried if I came out that judges would think that, oh, well, since she's this, she probably looks too manly or she looks too, um, she's not feminine enough because of this or and I was scared that their views on these things could damage my scoring. 
Um, but eventually I was like, screw that. If they do that, then that's horrible. That's not my problem. I'm going to do what I can do. And if they do that, then, you know, so be it. At least I'm out there and I'm free and I feel like I'm able to give it my all then hide behind something. How do you think you can help others? Because you already said people can yeah. tell you. Oh my God, it. I've gotten so many people like either through the internet or in person just telling me that seeing someone like me has helped them feel more comfortable and seeing others around them support me made them feel like they would be accepted. And that's all, if a handful of people have that, then having, you know, if judges take a few points off my score, I do not care. As long as I've helped those people, I'm happy. Beyond skating, what mm -hmm. other things in your life you would like to do? Yeah, I mean, I definitely want to, I'm a huge mental health advocate as well. Uh, I want to do mentorships with other athletes, other skaters. There is a lot of struggles with mental health in this sport because yeah, it's such a it's an aesthetic sport it's really hard on your body it's hard on your mind it is a very difficult thing to be in and i want younger kids to know they're not alone and not have to go through the same mistakes and problems that i did so i really want to try and help as many as i can that sounds like a great plan thank you <laughs> So then, Amber, thank you so much. Thank um, you. And wish you the best of luck Yay. for the next season. Oh, because, goodness. Yeah, looking forward, maybe now some vacation, and then we will <laughs> There will be some stuff to come, you'll see. So, <laughs> <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> awesome, thank and you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.